Hi guys, welcome back to Wentworth Life, the YouTube channel that talks everything Wentworth. I'm really sorry for the delayed video guys, I've had a bit of issues with my internet connection recently, so that's why it's been such a long delay for this next video. But uh, we're back now, so let's get started. So, just to let you know guys, that these are just theories that I've invented. It's just a little bit of fun, a little bit of fan fiction. Um, obviously, this is not how Season 8 is going to pan out. Like I said, it's just a bit of fun. If you haven't seen Part 1 of my Season 8 theories, then go back to my channel and check that video out first, because this one is going to pick up right where it left off. And where it left off was a big explosion happened during the wedding reception. Frankie and Bridget got married, but Ferguson planted a bomb that Jake had delivered, unwillingly knowing that there was a bomb in the parcel. So the bomb exploded, sending people flying everywhere. Will was outside on the phone. He got blown off his feet and Jake looks outside the window and he sees the devastation. So let's crack straight on. Will picks himself up from the ground, covered in cuts and bruises and is surrounded by smoke. People are running out of the wedding reception, screaming. Vera runs out and Will grabs her to check to see that she's okay. Jake comes out of the hotel with baby Grace in his arms and sees Will and Vera and they call for an ambulance and a fire brigade. Inside the wreckage, Bridget is walking through the building hunting for Frankie. She finds Frankie's dad and sister who appear to be okay but they can't find Frankie anywhere. The fire team and ambulance crew arrive and they search for any missing people in the wreckage. They find Frankie who is alive but she is trapped underneath a lot of debris and is badly hurt. Bridget runs to her side and holds on to her. She tells Frankie that she is not leaving her side. The fire team and the crew get in and they move the debris and Frankie is pulled out of the wreckage. Everyone is confused by what's just happened and they are all taken to hospital. Jake's head is in a mess. He cannot believe what has just happened. Vera and baby Grace are kept in hospital overnight for observation. Jake tries to contact Ferguson, but Ferguson is lurking in the shadows inside the hospital. Vera wakes up in the middle of the night after a bad dream and finds that baby Grace has been taken. Vera in a panic calls for help. Jake and Vera are running around looking for baby Grace. Police and security check CCTV and they pull up a familiar face on the screen. A horrified Vera cannot believe her eyes, it's impossible, but what she sees is Ferguson and she has taken baby Grace. Vera runs out of the hospital screaming Ferguson's name and she spots Ferguson on the hospital roof with baby Grace. Vera runs up with Jake not far behind. They make it to the roof and Ferguson turns around holding baby Grace and she says, Hello Vera. The police see the commotion on the roof along with a horrified crowd. Vera pleads with Ferguson to give her baby back. Ferguson toys with Vera and Jake on the roof and says that she isn't going to hurt baby Grace. She just wants to speak to Vera about the explosion. Vera realises that it was Ferguson but Ferguson turns around and tells Vera that it was Jake who delivered the bomb. Vera cannot believe what she is hearing but Ferguson forces Jake to admit the truth to Vera. It's a very tense scene standoff, but the police arrive on the roof to talk to Ferguson. Ferguson tells Vera that plan number two is about to start, and she hands Vera back baby Grace, but then she is apprehended by the police. What exactly is Ferguson's plan number two? Vera tells Jake that she never ever wants to see him again, and Jake is devastated. Ferguson is held in the police station and is then questioned. The police want to know how she escaped, who helped her, who buried her alive and how did she even get out and who is the dead woman in the box? Who's been helping her since she's escaped? Ferguson drops a big bombshell. She tells the police that it wasn't Channing who buried her alive but it was Frankie. Frankie escaped with Ferguson and Bridget met Frankie on the outside and the pair of them buried Ferguson in a shadow grave and made a run for it. So in the hospital, Bridget is by Frankie's bedside. Frankie is going to be okay. But the police arrive and in a shocking scene, they charge both Frankie and Bridget with the attempted murder of Joan Ferguson. Back at Wentworth, Dr. Miller wants to know why newcomer Cass Parker is so aggressive with everyone around her and books her in for some sessions. 
we learn a little bit more about Parker's backstory. When she was growing up, she had twin siblings, an older brother and a sister, who systematically bullied her and made her life unbearable. Whenever Parker told her mum and dad about this, they just turned around and laughed at her. Parker wasn't a very bright child and one day her head just snapped and we learn that Cass Parker set fire to her family home killing her whole family and that is why she's in prison with the aggression that she has and she no longer trusts anyone. General Manager Ann Reynolds informs Will that Vera is coming back to Wentworth as governor earlier than expected. She also tells them that they are going to be having a full time new doctor in the prison called Dr Kate Peterson. Dr. Peterson arrives at Wentworth, a tall, very attractive woman who seems like the prisoner's friend, but she is holding a very dark secret. Rita Connors, now enjoying the top dog life, is helping Ruby to plan her future for when she gets released. Ruby and Ali are close, but they are still just friends for the moment. Ali gets a worrying letter hidden in her bed, a letter saying that she is going to pay for what she's done. Ali is all confused, but when the news on the TV shows that Ferguson is alive and well, she thinks that it's probably something just to do with Ferguson. Later on, Ferguson returns to Wentworth, and Vera orders that she is put straight into protection for the foreseeable future. While Ferguson is taken down into protection, she sees a familiar face, Anne Reynolds. They link eyes, and Anne Reynolds has a worried look on her face. Just what is the history between these two? Ferguson is put into protection and she gets to meet Mari Winter. The two of them chat. Mari tells Ferguson that she heard about her escape before she was brought into Wentworth. And she also tells Ferguson about his son Danny and about the killer Ruby. She also tells Ferguson that she has failed her escape attempt a few months back. Ferguson turns around and asks Mari if she's given up on her revenge with Ruby. Amari tells her, hell no, I'm just biding my time, and when the time is right, I will execute Ruby. Later on, Anne Reynolds comes to visit Ferguson in protection. Ferguson tells Anne that it's been a while. We learn that Ferguson and Anne worked together at Blackmore before Anne became governor. We also learn that 10 years ago, Anne Reynolds' daughter was kidnapped and raped by a gang of men and women and one of the women from the gang ended up in Blackmore. Anne Reynolds made the woman's life hell to the point the woman ended up killing herself. Ferguson gave Anne an alibi and now Ferguson wants to cash in. She wants Anne Reynolds to get her out of protection and back into general otherwise she is going to tell everyone about what happened. Ali is continuing to get threatening notes and is still under the impression that it's Ferguson. But Mr. Jackson tells Ali that it's impossible as Ferguson has no contact with anyone, let alone being able to send threatening letters. And this worries Ali. We later learn that Dr. Kate Peterson has a very dark secret. And that secret is that she was Sean Brody's mum, the man that Ali shot and killed in the siege, and she is out for some hell bent revenge on Ali. Frankie and Bridget are brought into Wentworth as prisoners, along with another new inmate, Rebecca Keane, who has been arrested for robbery and on a hit and run charge. Boomer is so happy to see Frankie back under the circumstances. However, Frankie is more interested in getting her hands on Ferguson. When Frankie, Bridget and Rebecca Keane are admitted into Wentworth, Dr. Miller has the shock of his life. Rebecca Keane is his adopted sister. Jake pleads for forgiveness with Vera and Vera is having none of it. She thought he had changed but his actions could have caused her and baby Grace to be killed along with all her friends. Vera makes it clear that their relationship is over and orders him to stay away from her and the baby. Vera has some more problems when Anne Reynolds tells Vera that Ferguson is to be released into general. Vera is powerless and tells Anne that Ferguson will be lynched if she's put back with the women. Vera calls Rita into the office and tells her about the Ferguson situation. Rita tells Vera that she will do what she can but she will not go out of her way to protect her after everything she has heard about Ferguson. Ferguson is also brought into Vera's office and she meets with Rita. Instantly, the pair dislike each other. Ferguson whispers in Rita's ear that she is going to overthrow her top dog position. Later on, Ferguson is brought back to H-Block with Rita much to a lot of the women's horror. 
Ferguson is put away in a different part of H-block, partially away from Frankie. Boomer offers to beat up Ferguson for Frankie, but Frankie tells her no, it's too dangerous. She wants to do it herself when the time is right, but Bridget tries to talk Frankie out of it. Rebecca Keane makes herself known to the women and makes it clear that she hates the screws and the cops. Rita looks a little bit worried as she gets paranoid that maybe Rebecca Keane knows about her undercover cop story, but it turns out that it is that, just paranoia for the moment. Later on, Ferguson sees that Cass Parker is a bit of an outcast and she sees that she doesn't get on with any of the women. In one scene, some of the women tease Parker and Ferguson sticks up for her and takes her under her wing. Ferguson offers Parker friendship for some protection. Ruby's release date arrives and it's a sad moment for Rita. The women say their goodbyes to Ruby and Ruby leaves the prison. She heads down the road but a van drives up and two men jump out of the van and kidnap Ruby. Mari gets word that her people have now got Ruby and she's getting ready for her next move to get out of Wentworth once and for all. Dr. Kate Peterson is also ready to make her move on Ali and she calls Ali in for a checkup. What does Dr. Kate Peterson have in store for Ali?